<sighs> well, welcome back to 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. And just an FYI, I got a warning about the last episode with the, uh, the magazines. So far, it's just a warning, but who the hell knows, you know, where the attitudes will fly on this whole thing. Especially after this one. So anyway... Going back to 1977, uh, a film called Slapshot, uh, a major release starring Paul Newman and a lot of other actors. Uh, there's a backstory to this. I was seeing a woman named Linda, who was, for lack of better words, institutionalized. And I went to visit her one Saturday afternoon, and she was really pissed off and tweaked about all this bullshit going on, and she says, I really need to get out of here, I really need to see a movie or something. So, me being the romantic that I am, busted her out. So, lit up a joint. We're driving in my van up Route 23 when I saw Cinema 23 and Slapshot was playing. So, having no idea what this was about, we parked and went in. Well, this film is about hockey. And it's a Rust Belt team called the Charleston Chiefs that are playing in this depressed Rust Belt town where there's a steel mill, and the rumors are that the steel mill is going to go out of business, and when it does, no more Charleston Chiefs. So, Paul Newman is Reggie Dunlop, the player coach. Struther Martin, in his sixth Paul Newman film, is John McGroth, uh, the uh, manager of the team. Michael O'Keaton is Ned Braden, one of the main players. Uh, Jerry Hauser is in there. And um, two brothers, uh, what the hell is their name? Uh, the Carlson brothers and a guy named Hanson play the Hanson brothers. Um, basically, what it is, is everybody's disgruntled, and um, Joe McGroth has weird little ideas to make extra money, like sticking the players in a fashion show. And just to warn everybody, uh, this film is rated R, and it has this thing of language maybe not appropriate for younger children. Well, why would you bring a younger child in to see a movie that every other word is fuck? And it gets worse than that. I mean, you know, the language is completely foul. Um, during this fashion show, one of the players tells McGroth, Joe, fuck you, I'm not doing this. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to whip my cock out, and that's going to be the end of it, which he does. So, it's floating around that the team will be shut down if the steel mill goes out of business. And Reggie plants a seed into this sports writer, Dickie Dunn, played by M. Emmett Walsh, about how there's a retirement community down in Florida that misses hockey and are going to buy the Chiefs. So that sets a little spirited stuff in there. Um, Dunlop is definitely searching for a way to, you know, get people to come out. And he is in bed with the wife of the goalie of a team they're going to play over the weekend. And she admits that she had a lesbian experience and she's hiding out from her husband, Harahan. So during the game, Reggie gets behind the goalie thing and goes, Harahan, Suzanne eats pussy. Harahan, your wife's a dyke. I know, she told me. Well, he loses his shit and this huge brawl breaks out. And that sort of segues into what Reggie wanted to do, because to get people in there, they're not going to go see the mundane, vanilla fucking Chiefs. They want action. So McGrath, the chief, McGrath, the cheapskate, hires these three brothers, the Hanson brothers, who have basically taped glasses and bring their toys to the thing and beat up a Coke machine. Uh, when Dunlop sees them taping lead to their knuckles, he's loath to use them. But after his little tay to tay with Harahan, he figures, why not? So he lets them loose. Right before the game, a huge brawl breaks out. They finally restore order. They're all standing there listening to the national anthem with blood trickling down their faces when the referee gets in one of the brothers' faces and, and starts screaming at him. And the brother looks at him and he goes, would you mind shutting up? I'm trying to listen to the fucking song. So that sets the tone. So, of course, one of them is arrested for beating up a fan because they, they're nearsighted. Somebody throws something and they go up at the stands and beat the shit out of like three fans before they get to the right one. So, all of a sudden, Dunlop has the idea. He puts a bounty out on the player coach of the next team, who's Dr. Hook. $100 bounty. So, when they get to the arena, 
Uh, the two of them meet, and Dr. Hook looks at Dunlop, and he goes, Dunlop, you suck cock, and Dunlop shoots back, all I can get. So that again sets the tone. So all this stuff's going on. They go into one town that basically has a whole bunch of protesters waiting for them, and the entire team and their fans are mooning the townsfolk out of the windows of their bus. And that's another thing. Whatever happened to mooning? Mooning was a great American tradition. I used to do it all the time back in the day. My former wife had an AMC pacer, which was ideal for slipping the trowel down, turning sideways, and giving somebody a pressed ham against the glass. Even when I was in high school, we were on a field trip, and one of us decided to moon somebody out the back of the bus. And we were pulled over because one of the boys, according to the police that were called, dropped their trousers. Okay, fine. So anyway... It all culminates that basically Dunlop wants to find out who owns the team, goes to McGraw, McGraw, McGrath and starts telling him, he goes, look, Joe, I won't say anything about the time I went up to your room and you were drunk and had on a bra with spinning pasties and uh, a, a leather patterned, uh, a, a leopard patterned jock strap. So McGrath, you know, hesitantly gives out the name of the owner, who is this rich woman. So now there's like a final showdown. But they brought in all the players that were basically goons, and Dunlop agreed, you know, regular hockey, this and that and the other thing, we're not going to fuck around anymore. Well, they brought in this Canadian player, which is, of course, insulting the Canadians, why not? What the hell, it's a film. Ogie Oglethorpe, who was so bad that he was deported back to Canada, and Canada didn't want him and send him back. So you have all these players basically, you know, beating up the Chiefs because the Chiefs aren't going to fight. Uh, Ned Braden decides to skate around and do a fucking strip tease, which en enrages Dr. Hook to the point where he punches out the referee, and the Chiefs win the, t win the title. Well, Reggie goes to this woman's house and basically, you know, says, well, you know, she goes, I thought that was very cute to you, you know, with the Dickie Dunn thing and stuff like that, but basically she goes, on paper, it's easier for me just to disband the team. So he looks at her and goes, you're fucked. And then he gets up to leave and he goes, that your kid outside? He looks like a faggot to me. You better watch out or we're going to find out him with a cock in his mouth. And that's how it ends, or ends off. Um, crazy film, pretty offensive. And like I said, you know, the cancel culture hasn't jumped onto this because, you know, we, they go after, you know, transgendered, uh, gay, Canadians, whatever. If there, would probably, if there was a black guy in there, it would be racist comments too, but what the fuck. Paul Newman said it was his favorite movie that he ever did up until the day he died. And uh, as for me and Linda, we left the theater satisfied, engaged in a spirited bout of tonsil hockey and some other stuff in the band before I brought her back, only to see a squad car sitting in front of the place and being that discretion is the better part of valor, I drove around to the back of the building, let her off, and uh, she went on her merry way. Oh, I did get her out one more time, but it's a different story. So, honestly, with this episode, I feel the only way to end it is with, why not? Why don't we just do a time-honored tradition here and basically end it with a moon. So, until next time, stay safe. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the flip side.